Ready, Rick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Ready. All the signs. This calls the Wilmette Public Library District Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, March 20th, 2018 at 7.30. Board meeting notices have been posted at Village Hall and at the Metro Stating Station. The board meeting agenda has been posted on the WPL Legal Bulletin Board and has been distributed to WPL staff members and the president of the Friends of the Library. Can we have a roll call? We certainly can. Trustee Johnson? Here. <coughs> Trustee Rogers? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Barshes? Here. Trustee Wolf? Here. Behind tab one are the minutes from the February 20th, 2018 meeting, board meeting. Are there any corrections or comments? Mm -hmm. that we, a I'll, I'll motion that we accept the minutes. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are honored to have Jody Mariano, a principal of Tesco Associates, who's been working with Jan and some of the other committee members. And we look forward to your presentation about the outdoor landscape plan. Thank you very much. Um, so I am Joe Mariano, and I am a principal landscape architect with Pesco Associates, and I know that many of you already are familiar with this project, um, and I'll just uh, give you a, a brief overview of what we've been up to. So um, we began working on the landscape master plan assignment with the steering committee back in October of 2017, and we have had four steering committee meetings so far. Uh, the committee meetings have been a very collaborative, very lively discussion. There has been a core steering committee, but we have also had other uh, members of the board and other invited guests come and join some committee meetings. The committee meetings have also been open to the public, and so we've had um, a lot of great input so far. Uh, we um, have looked at some of the activities that we've done together with the committee as we've looked at other library and public place projects. We've walked the site together multiple times. Um, we heard a lot about the types of improvements and the types of activities that we'd like to see out there. So uh, the work that's gonna be presented here tonight is the product of that collaboration. Uh, you all have handouts as well of the, um, of the exhibits and some budget costs that are at the end of the packet. So what I'll do is maybe just kind of go through some overview. I know many people are very familiar with this. <coughs> Feel free to interrupt me as, as we go through, and then we can um, have a discussion at the end. So um, the board down here, I'm not going to spend too much time on, but this depicts the um, existing conditions. We just wanted to make sure that we understood what's out there today. I don't have it with me tonight, but we also did take an inventory of all of the donor plaques and materials that are out there. There are quite a few. Mm. So it's important to think about those things as we uh, plan for changes in the landscape. Some of the um, early activities that we had were more visioning, sort of strategic type thinking as far as what types of space we'd like to see happen in front of the library. Granted, it's not a large area, but it is your campus. And so we've already done some pretty great things. Just to orient you, here's Park Avenue, here's Wilmette. Um, the library parking lot is here that was recently reconstructed with permeable pavers. Uh, this photograph is even taken when your geothermal was being installed. So you see the machinery there and the protection on the sculpture. Uh, but what we're looking at collectively as part of the committee is we're looking at uh, this main entrance area, the lawn here, the frontage along Wilmette Avenue, um, the area along Park, and then just some discrete areas within the parking lot, the islands and the perimeter parking treatments. By the way, um, for those that aren't aware, back in 2006, we at Tesca assisted with this little garden um, here. So it is such a pleasure to come back oh, and man. still stay involved. 
So as a, as a group, the committee looked at um, other sample projects. There's some photographs there, some inspiration photos. Some of the things that the group got really excited about were creative and sculptural types of seating, uh, some open lawn areas to uh, provide space for the activities and events that happen out here, and then also some other interactive spaces that could, you know, there's not a lot of stuff in here, but it's more spaces that people can gather um, and sit and walk. The strategies are, are listed here, and so these were our guides as we moved forward with the plan. So the, the conceptual master plan that um, has come out of those discussions, uh, a couple of things. So looking, um, I guess we'll start with the library parking lot. This is the municipal parking lot here. Uh, the intent is to really just improve the landscape treatments that are there today. Uh, some of the trees are in poor condition. There could stand to be a few more trees to provide for shading and landscape plantings. Also, the islands in here, uh, the intent was to treat those with uh, just a simple concrete treatment rather than lawn or, or plantings. This is where it gets very exciting. The intent at the entrance area was to really create a more welcoming, inviting space. Uh, and also to protect the garden, the ellipse garden that's here up at the at the north. The um, area in here that we call the open lawn really is intended to take all the seating areas and put them to the perimeters of the ellipse and keep this nice and clean and open as a lawn space. We're uh, recommending some opportunities for different types of seating, uh, bench seating and those sculptural pebble type seats. We're also showing a location for the statue to be relocated so that it's better integrated with this space. Um, and then also an opportunity for some signage here, and I'll show you some renderings to what that could look like. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, all the uh, plaques and stuff, Yeah. Um, are there, do they like line up with benches, or do we have like donor, you know, like plaque opportunities for benches and stuff like that? Sure. So. You, a couple of things. So the, all of the donor materials that you have out there today are a variety of different types. There are some that are bronze plaques, there are some that are little stones that have plaques associated with stones, there are some that are plaques next to trees. So um, we've taken in all that information just so that it's well documented. Yeah. And the intent is to collect all that information and then uh, the library staff has indicated that there would be outreach to those families and to try and figure out a way that they could all be made aware of this project and then the acknowledgement for those dona donations would occur sort of at a collected space internal to the library. The problem with sometimes with those donor materials is that if there is a donor plaque on a bench, for instance, and the bench is, is in poor condition, it's not yeah. surviving, then you know that, that poor donor plaque is sort of succumbing to the fate of the bench. Yeah. And it's really important, more important that we think as a group to you know acknowledge the donor. So that's um, that's that's the first part. I think the second part of your question is how about payment or um, donations for new materials? I just uh, I I happen to be personally in this process now. My uh, grandmother uh, in law passed, so uh, it's it's just sort of happens to be top of mind. But uh, sure, sure. Is there a thought that like there'd be like some collective outside? Acknowledgement of everybody that's done donor stuff over the years, or, or it could be in the vestibule. It's going to be in the vestibule. Yeah, we were talking about doing a donor plaque inside, like mm -hmm. more of an art piece, so that we can collect it in all those ways. Because it's it's very hard to do it outside. There's such limited space and elements. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's just a continual thing over time right. that well, a few people are able to do it, but not many. But with like sort of a a collaborative art piece for a donor wall, right. um, there's a lot more opportunities there. So I don't know if anyone's been to the um, Writer's Theater in Glencoe. Yeah. But if you yeah, look okay. inside their vestibule on you know one side, there's this very well-detailed um, donor wall. And it's just engraved wood. It's very simple. But you know, with donor walls, it's important to make sure that, you know one, they're acknowledged in a, in a nice way, but also that you can build onto that and add more. So, um, you know, I think that the thought is to do something not necessarily in that material, but sort of similar, that it can be collected in one space. Um, the other piece of it, too, is that to line up the funding and the donations with the fabrication and installation of individual benches, benches sure. becomes sort of a challenge. Thank the you. other question is, yeah. with that barrier between the municipal parking lot, will there be some walkways so that we don't walk through the grass or? Sure. We looked a lot, we looked at that very carefully. So 
um, what we're dealing with is that there is a little bit of a grade change. It's higher, mm -hmm. as you know, up here and lower at your lot. And so if we were to accommodate accessible walkways, we would need uh, to do some more significant structural improvements. Um, because we were not able to do that, because we don't control the property, the, um, the, the design direction that we took was to create just very simple breaks between the landscape plantings. So okay. it would be mulch or gravel or something similar that somebody could walk through without trampling. But it can't be made an accessible path, unfortunately. Does that, um, I mean, it's a broader question, but uh, are we, I mean, ultimately it's ridiculous that they're not integrated in some way and it's, you know, uh, it is what it is, but going forward, are we like precluding anything by planting all these trees and sort of treating, it feels a little bit more permanent, to put up sort of this beautiful green wall. And, uh, you know, I know the committee considered it and, and I don't think we've sort of taken this opportunity to have this broader discussion about parking, but um, I personally wouldn't want to preclude the opportunity to do what seems to be the eminently reasonable thing and integrate the parking and clean it up and you know, not make it so unsafe in the four curb cuts. So what's the thought on keeping our options open or using this as an opportunity to see if we get a better solution with the municipal, you know, with the partnership with the village and, and all that? And I, and I appreciate, sure. like, there's only so much the yeah, landscape no, no. architect can do, right? Well, I mean, sure. Yeah. And, and we are familiar with, with the history and of the planning of the parking lot okay. and, and other things relative to the downtown plan. So, um, so yes, it was part of early conversations. The de design direction that we all took was that there were no immediate plans to do that level of improvement now. And so um, the desire by the committee was just to reinforce the property that the library does control with plantings. But you're absolutely right. I mean, you never want to plant something thinking that it would be removed at a later date, but at the same time, I don't think that the committee felt like there was anything in the near term that would be in place. Mm -hmm. What I like about that, <coughs> excuse me, is that right now you just force yourself through some bushes and, you know, if you get scratched, so what? But this <laughs> gives people a space that's kind of safe, you know, to be able to get through from that area to our library parking lot. So for it's, that, it's better. It still know. won't be accessible, though, to wheelchairs and strollers. The, no. That's correct. The issue, quite frankly, is that we need more cooperation from the village before that could be addressed. Sure. Yeah. And that hasn't occurred yet. They still have officially a comprehensive plan that turns that lot into a park where they proposed to move the French market. And of course, anybody who would try to attend or go to the French market, if it were in that location, would have only one place to park, right. our lot. Right. So that's the level of forethought that's gone into the comprehensive plan. Um, we don't control the comprehensive plan. Um, so we still have to keep working on that. It's not something we can do in this project. So I would, you know, and I, um, I'm the new guy, so I'm, you know, inheriting, Good learning question. all this. But I, I, I guess I would just raise it as uh, it, it appears that it seems to take a step away from where I think we want to go, which is we want that cooperation. We want to integrate the, the property lines. I like making it better than the bushes. Mm -hmm. But planting trees feels like kind of giving up on, like, what needs to happen and coordinating these lots. So I, I, that's, it all looks wonderful. It's great. But I, I personally feel like that looks like a wall and it looks like we're, I don't think we what took the opportunity. What type of trees would you plant there? I, look, I'd open it all up, right? I'd make it as safe as you can. But like, from our perspective, we want to extend the lot and make one nice big clean lot. And, and from our perspective, I hope, I think we should take this opportunity. I don't know that we have formally. I think informally we talked six months ago or something. But I think we should, part of our plan should be like, what we prefer is a big open lot together and planting trees around the whole perimeter and formally ask the village to participate in that. I don't think it's to our advantage as to how we want to treat the lots to put up anything that doesn't go in that direction. Well, there is an interim solution that may need to be considered. And that's what I think this is. Sure, and to the question about what kinds of trees, um, some photographs of the plant materials that we have been thinking about are here. 
And so it's, it's a native derived list of plant materials. The trees that we've been looking at are um, elms and upright oak trees. So, you know, it, of course, when they are installed, they look like this. They look very thin, but then as they grow over time, they, they get much bigger. Is that what you've got going in between the two parking lots? Yes. The, the elm trees. There is another thing that is working in our favor. It's not intentional, and it's not something we control since mm -hmm. we don't have any direct authority over that lot. But the village has done us a tremendous favor with the very poor maintenance <laughs> that they've provided in that space right. and in the rest of the alley. You know, it, it makes no sense to me as a public official that they would not have required the construction company that built the Ford <coughs> property building yeah. to have repaved the entire alley. Right. It's nonsense because the trucks that were involved in that construction did not land by helicopter. <laughs> they drove over and contributed mightily to the deterioration of that alley. Yeah. But they didn't pave any part of the alley that's not adjacent to the building. And it's in terrible shape. Mm -hmm. They similarly did not redo the entire surface of their lot. They only redid.